You might know me as that guy that only uses Omnioculus Void Hunter, so it might surprise you to know that recently I have been absolutely falling in love with a melee-based Arc Hunter build that is off the charts powerful and off the charts fun. If Void Hunter is the support survivability class, then Arc Hunter is the DPS vampiric counterpart. It's quick, it's flashy, it's explosive, and I'll even dare to say it's invincible. To showcase this build in all its glory and show you how to master it to perfection, I want to try the following three-step process. Step one is teaching you the build itself, what aspects, fragments, armor mods, and weapons to use, along with a Destiny Item Manager build link that you can use to instantly copy it all onto your Guardian with just a few clicks. Step two is walking through the solo flawless Grandmaster Devil's Lair on screen right now, where I talk through how it all works, explain all of its quirks and nuances, and generally just show you the ins and outs of this build through what I believe is a fun and educational speedrun of the strike. Finally, in step three, on approximately the second week of December, I'll release a full-scale playbook for this build, which, similar to the Void Hunter and Solar Titan playbooks I did, will leave no stone unturned as we walk through this power fantasy fulfilling super soldier in all its glory. If that sounds of interest to you, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel so you can watch it right when it comes out. And thanks for supporting my channel if you do make that choice. So, step one, the build. We'll walk through this pretty quickly since most of the explanation of how we put this all to use will take place throughout the play-by-play -play Grandmaster in step two. For aspects, I'm rocking Lethal Current for tons of melee benefits from our dodge, as well as Flow State for amplification on killing jolted enemies. My fragments of choice are Resistance for more durability when near enemies, which is always, Feedback for bonus melee damage after taking a hit, Magnitude for increased lingering grenade duration, and Shock for jolting grenades. For my core abilities, I've got Gathering Storm, Pulse Grenades, and the bread and butter of the build, combination blow. For stats, I'm prioritizing resilience and discipline, and for armor mods, I've got Bountiful Wells, Seeking Wells, Well of Ions, and two copies of Melee Wellmaker. This results in constant extra bonus damage from melees and a ludicrous amount of instant grenade cooldown. I've also got Hands On for increased super energy from melee kills, Bomber for grenade cooldown refund on dodging, and specific to this Grandmaster, Overload Arc Grenades on my class item. For weapons, I'm rocking Arbalist for shield and barrier breaks, a machine gun as an extra overload stun option, and most importantly, a one-two punch shotgun. Typically, I hate running double special, but with this build, you are killing everything with your punches, so a primary weapon isn't exactly needed. If you need the Destiny Item Manager link for that, you can find it in the pinned comment down below. And if you accidentally hit the like button on your way down there, well, well, that would be just fine. With all that being said, let's move on to step two, where I'll teach you exactly how to put this to use to become the best hunter your friends have ever seen. And I want to start stacking my combination blow over here on the Acolytes. Even though there's literally two ships, I guess kind of counterintuitive. But I want to get times three... And then I have my overload grenades on, so I'll just chuck an overload grenade at this captain, once you punch, and then he dies in two hits. I want to get a quick melee off my combination blow, though, before I start going. Before, so I can try and keep combination blow up at the next room. When is the ARC playbook coming out? Like, a couple weeks, probably, like, first week of December, second week of December, maybe. So make sure to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, so that you can see that right when it comes out. Nice plug. Just gonna work our way through all these guys. And by the way, uh, so you'll notice I do like three big chunks of damage. One is from my melee, and then the other is from the damaging aftershock from Lethal Currents. Like that explosion right there is from Lethal Current. You get a damaging aftershock every time you melee something after you use your dodge. And that also stacks with Combination Blow, so if you have Combination Blow X3, like, it's gonna do a ton of damage. What, I don't know what just happened there with my melee tracking. The reason I jumped right there, by the way, is for whatever reason, melee hit registration is really weird in Destiny, where like sometimes 
you'll try to melee something and it won't connect with the target or it'll connect with the target like it'll track to it but it won't do damage i noticed that the most common cause of that is when you try to melee something that's on a different elevation than you so especially for like floating enemies like wizards and servitors it can be really really helpful to avoid that issue by like jumping up to their elevation before trying to melee them okay I killed both of those guys one from the jolt which is nice and as far as I can tell, by the way, the jolt does not make you invisible from the effects of Assassin's Cowl, but the damaging aftershock from Lethal Current definitely does. So if you punch something and... Like, right there, boom. See how I didn't kill with my initial punch, but my damaging aftershock from Lethal Current did still made me invisible. So the reason I didn't jump to hit that wizard is because she like strafed down a little bit closer to the ground. So she was on my same elevation. Now I'm going to wait until my dodge is back up so I can dodge to get the lethal current damaging aftershock. Which makes it way easier to kill those overload captains and whatnot. And then we're going to try and set up for this area right here. So I'm going to try to, I like to put my, put my arc staff right there. And I kind of made a mistake by using my dodge too early. And I didn't actually get to then dodge next to an enemy to refund my melee charge. Which is important because even though I have combination blow X3 on. And I am getting the damage buff from punching stuff. And it's still empowered melee so it'll still make me invisible from the effects of Assassin's Cal. Um, it will not refresh the buff if I do not get a kill with combination blow up which is a pretty important part of this. You want to have Combination Blow X3 up at all times. So even though it's not necessarily the end of the world um, to get a kill without the melee ability up, it's definitely better to get a kill with the melee ability up because um, then you can continuously do your, your um, cycle of dodge melee, dodge melee, dodge melee. Because, of course, the melee is going to give you... Or your dodge is going to give you your melee ability back. And then when you get a kill with combination blow, it'll consume the melee, refresh your stacks, and give you your dodge back. And then, of course, you can just use your dodge to once again get your melee ability back. Now, you notice sometimes that I'll kill things with the punch. Um, and it will not eat my melee ability. It will not eat my combination blow and simultaneously not give me back my dodge. And that's what happens when they die to the damaging aftershock from Lethal Current and not the actual punch itself. Because they're not dying to Combination Blow, so it's not going to consume the Combination Blow. Because Combination Blow only gets consumed when you land a final blow with it. So, that's kind of what's going on when that happens. So I'm just continuously dodging around, and I want to try and kill these wizards before I bring out future waves of enemies because the wizards are some of the most annoying to deal with because they're solar shielded which automatically makes them a little harder to kill because I have to drop their shields with Arbalest first. And they do arc damage. Um, so here I'll probably use my arc super. And I'm going to try and get a kill on one of those guys to refresh my combination blow. I'm actually not too concerned about killing this barrier knight right now. Like, I don't need to rush to kill him. But, I mean, he's out in the open now, so I'm fine to get a free kill. Reload all my stuff. And now it looks like we're on wave 2. And I know on wave 2 I get a sniper up there, and I want to kill him first, because he's definitely the most lethal target. And I just kind of know from playing that yellow bars typically are not going to die in one hit, so that's why I ready my one to punch shotgun on them. Because ideally, even though I would still get the invisibility from the... I would do the punch, and then it would give me the damaging aftershock, which would, you know, still give me the invisibility, so I would be fine. Um, oh, can't see anything. Um, like I said, I would be fine, but it would not refresh my combination blow or give me back my dodge, which in an ideal world, I want both of those things because I want my combination blow timer to keep going. 
And I want my dodge back so I can dodge next to something again to get that, uh, that aftershock. Because it's especially important for, like, champions, for example. Now, I don't have my grenade back. Oh, but he literally, he teleported into my pulse grenade. That was extremely lucky. So, pick up the special brick. And also, if anyone has any questions about, like, any of the functionalities of Arc Hunter, obviously feel free to leave them down in the comments if this is the run that I end up uploading, assuming I don't wipe it. Um, and maybe I will upload it even if I do wipe it, because I feel like it's a lot of good information in here already. Um, but, yeah, obviously, leave them in the comments below. And um, also, of course, doing Arc Hunter playbook on the YouTube channel probably in a few weeks. Um, which will just be a complete deep dive on every single little thing you could possibly ever want to know about this build. Okay, so we're going to clear out this room a little bit. I got to get the Servitor. Got the servitor, and then I really want to get these two snipers up here. A ton of snipers in this area that I usually try and wipe out first. And I'm actually going to try and throw my arc super at this brig. Because obviously I can't go running around punching the brigs. Not really going to work out too well. Um, so I got to use my arc supers on them when I have them up. Because I get my super back pretty quickly. Because I have um, hands on. Which gives me extra super energy when I get stuff with melee kills. Um, and just like, you know, I'm killing a lot of stuff. Pretty quickly. So, pretty nice to... Okay, here's a yellow bar, so I have to one-two punch shock on him. And I'm going to hang tight, because the tank is aiming literally right there. And he... That was maybe a little risky, because I didn't necessarily know with 100% certainty that that punch, or that that shotgun wasn't going to kill him. And if my shotgun shot kills him there, that's really bad, uh, because then I have nothing to punch to get my... Invis back. And I hear the walker about to do his little ground pound. Just get it back out. And see, like, I literally almost have my super back, so the super comes back really quickly. And I'm actually going to try and get the hell out of here. Because my invis is coming to an end. Actually, this guy is going to save me in that, in that front. But I think a big part of this build is kind of knowing when to retreat when to call it quits. Like, for example, right now, I think it's time for me to stop greeting for... greeting for punch kills. And I'm just gonna go for the kill on this brig. Because the brigs, like I said, I do have to kill with um my weapons. Because I can't just go running up and punch them. They'll just kill me with their ground pound. And he's about to do his big gun, so I'm gonna rotate out. Get all my reloads off. This is the one part where I can't just like frantically punch everything. But I got one brig dead, which is really nice because the brigs are definitely the brigs in the tank are by far the hardest part of the solo. I mean the walker is not. Or I, yeah, I said the tank was one of the hardest parts. So never mind. I already covered my base on that. And I did I throw my stick at this guy? I think I did throw my R super at this guy, but like clearly he must have just like walked out of it because it doesn't really look like it did anything. So I'm just gonna slowly but sure. Like on the bright side, I don't really need the ammo of this gun. I brought it um to overload the captains, but obviously I have overload on my pulse grenades. And with the way that my build is currently set up, where I basically get I think 30% of my grenade back on every melee kill from the wells it generates. It's either 30 or 20%. Um, but, yeah. Since I get so much grenade energy back um, and my grenades insta-stun the captains, it's not the biggest deal in the world that um, I lose all my heavy machine gun ammo, because obviously I have, like, theoretically infinite grenades. Because um, it'll always recharge. Okay. So now... I need to find a way to get back into the fight with my invisibility and with my 3x combination blow. So I'm just gonna kind of like roam the field a little bit to try and find a drag. So that guy right there is my perfect target. I think I might put some heat into the walker first though. 
Make use of my ammo. And maybe even... That didn't land, unfortunately. I need to hide, too, because there's a ship flying in. And obviously, I don't want that ship to one-shot me, because it does do arc damage, and it'll hurt a pretty, pretty big deal. See an overload captain over here, though. I should have killed this guy when I was, like, doing my loop, because he's right in the center and kind of need him dead. But what I'll do here is I'll, I'll kind of weaken up the dregs. And then if I can get to that one, then I'm I'm golden. So it's kind of the riskiest part of this, I would say. The drag left. JK, no, he didn't. I thought he left for a second. I thought it, like the run was just toast. But now I can start stacking and get back to 3x. Spooky. Shank. Okay, now I'm 3x again. And it's it, it's a tough decision to make here because like I kind of want to kill the dregs, but at the same time I don't because I want them to be available for. Sorry, I, I couldn't talk because I was in like panic mode because I stunned the captain, but then the captain wasn't there anymore, and I was like, well, I don't really know what to do about this. Holy. Okay, I'm kind of playing in panic mode right now. Because I need to get my combination blow stacks back up. So there's two. I don't, I can't see where the walker's shooting. These fallen web mine slows are the biggest pain in the ass. Okay, I have combination blow x3, so I'm going to use it to kill this servitor. Which will kind of, like, open up the middle for me a lot more nicely. And then I'm going to go for the kill on this captain. I messed up my 1-2 punch, so it was very dangerous. But it still kind of worked out. But I would say that this area, if you're trying to practice this build, is incredible. Because... The biggest weakness of this build is trying to find a way to get into the fight. Because once you're at um, once you're at your times three, like you're good to go. Once you're at your combination blow times three, you're chilling. You can roam around and one shot literally anything, even champions. But getting to that times three is the difficult part. So we're just going to kind of roam, and then I'm going to play this room and try and absolutely sauce the tank. Because if I can kill the tank here, then I'm liking this run. Okay, big. Now the problem is... I need to stun this overload captain right off the rip. Huge. And then I need to get my combination blow stacks going so I can actually kill him. Okay, we're good. And then get my dodge for lethal current, grenade to stun, and we're good. Because I'll body shot the drag with Arbalist. Okay, I don't- I have literally zero clue why the first one did not count. Okay, there's combination blow x2, which means I have enough damage to one hit the next drag. And then I'll just clear out the rest of them. And then I'm just gonna play... Kill these overload... Chieftains... Captains, whatever they're called. I can find the other one. Oh, I need to make sure my combination blows up. Whoops. And then if I dodge next to this guy, I just... Okay, cool, I got this. And then... 
Pretty much what I'm going to do is just try and clear out a ton of the adds. And I'm actually going to kind of go underground here because I want to throw the spear at that guy. And then I want to like hop up and find something to melee. Like come from underground. Because if I stay above ground when I throw the spear, um, then I'm definitely just going to get lasered. Which is no good. Okay, so I already have the servitors up, which is really nice. But I want to keep punching stuff because I really want to get my super back. So that right when I break the servitors, I can go for uh, go for another super. The problem is there's explosive shanks up, which explosive shanks always make a pretty big problem. So I'm probably just going to retreat now because I really don't want to deal with explosive shanks. And... I'm out of Arbalist ammo now, which is actually really problematic, but I'll get a few from this brick. But I only get two. So I can only really use Arbalist to break the shield now. And I want to go for a punch here. But at the same time, I need to be careful because it's explosive shanks. But it looks like I actually killed most of the explosive shanks, so I think I'm actually okay now. I was hoping to get some more ammo, though, which is why I came out here in the first place. I'm kind of trying to hunt for some green ammo. So I really need it. But it looks like there isn't any. I'm gonna... Okay, I see some down below. Did you get my in, uh, in this timer back up to go for it? Oh, and my shotgun ammo is full, so I actually get the full brick of that towards Arbalist, so now I'm actually pretty good. Uh, in the Arbalist department. But I'm just gonna use Arbalist to... Uh, crack the shields on the servitors. I'm not going to use it to actually kill them, even though it would be a little faster to kill them. I'm going to reload this real quick, too. Because I need to make sure that I have enough Arbalist ammo to... What's it called? Kill the next set. Which I need at least four shots to break the shields, right? I mean, technically I don't, but... It'd be a hell of a lot easier. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop right back out and throw my spear. So I get a nice chunk of damage early on. And then I can start looking to try and restack. It's like, look at the damage that's doing. That's going to be my main source of damage. But now I'm going to look for a way to start stacking my combination blows so I can get back out there and start nailing everything again. Ideally, some enemies come down here, which sometimes they will. Because this is a really tough push to make. That right there. Ooh, I see shanks right there. So what I'll do is this will not give me a stack of combination blow. But it'll blow up the shanks. Um, which will make me invis, which can allow me to push in and actually start stacking. And then I'm actually, so that that's not going to refresh my combo blow because it's the damaging aftershock that's going to kill him in that particular instance. But I didn't know. So here I know I can one two punch safely. The reason I didn't do that on the other one is because he was a little weak and I didn't know if my one two punch was going to kill him. Because, again, if my shotgun gets the kill there, then I'm left out in the open with no invis and, like, pretty dangerous position to be in. And so my super is almost back up now. The unfortunate thing is it seems like... I'm not going to be able to throw it and keep my stacks. I mean, I might be able to. I actually might just be able to phase the boss just like this. Yeah, so I lost my stack, so I'll need to go for stacks again. Which does suck a little bit, but it's kind of okay. I want to try and get a spear on the boss. There we go. And then that'll take him to the final set of... And so 
So what I can do here is remember damaging aftershock. It won't give me my combination blow stack, but it will uh, make me invis and make elemental wells. And then I pick up the wells and then my wells of ions procs so that I get extra damage on my next melee, which then does give me enough damage to one hit the next shank, even though I don't have any combination blow. So now we're just playing out here, being a little dangerous. I'm going to go for this. It's kind of stupid for me to go for this. But I'm really good at being stupid. I just need to find the other overload captain. I just saw him. God bless that there was a Marauder right there randomly for me to keep my invis chain on. And there's some guys down here, which is really nice. So I'm just kind of, I'm kind of keeping my invis alive on all of these random trash enemies. Oh, okay. You were in a perfect spot. So now I get platinum, which, you know, if you're doing a solo falls GM, you gotta do platinum. Otherwise, does it really count? And I'm just gonna wipe all the servitors. And I have a ton of Arbalest ammo, so I can actually afford to use it on these servitors. I'm actually shaking right now. This is not good. I do not like being nervous. And I kind of want to go out and go for a spear immediately on the boss, but at the same time, I don't want to give him an angle to hit me. What is this one doing? There you go. I feel like it's kind of a bad idea to... Oh, hold up. Brilliant. And then I pick up a well. Gives me Well of Ions. Melee damage bonus, as you can see. And I'm gonna thin the pack a little bit before I start going for boss damage. I need to get the shank, so I make sure I get combination blow X3. And then we'll go for spear here. And I'm hoping there's an enemy down here. There's not, unfortunately. But it's okay, because I can just go for RB shots. And I'm going to wait to full regen before I re-peek. So I'm not trying to die to some crap. I'm just going to go for one shot at a time. There's honestly no point for me to take multiple shots at a time and give these vandals aggro on me, actually. Can I just snipe this dude? Now, as we're concluding with step two, I highly urge you to hop into solo dungeons, Master Nightfalls, or Grandmasters, and give this a try yourself leading up to the release of the Ark Hunter playbook in step three. Even if you can't beat them, it's still incredible practice for learning the class. And if you want to learn even more about Ark Hunter, I've been playing it nonstop on my live stream at twitch.tv slash so feel free to stop by and watch it in action. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see the playbook video in early December. Please consider or leaving a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and as always have a great day.